Hey my friends, Matt from Rancliffe Media here. Welcome to another DaVinci Resolve Studio tutorial. We're here on the edit page. I'm gonna be showing you guys just a few things you can do to make working in your timeline faster and easier. Now I'm talking about when you have multiple video tracks and audio tracks, and it can get quite complicated sometimes. And it can, and this is just gonna make it a lot easier to, to work in your timeline. Now, the first thing I like to do is go to my timeline view options up the top left here. And I just like to enable my waveform. So this little icon on the right, audio waveforms. And that way I can see my waveform when I'm trying to sync my video clips to my, to my music. Now, I also like to turn on this uh, waveform outline as well. That just gives you a more defined waveform border. And I tend to work in the non-rectified waveform as opposed to this because I just find it easier to, like as opposed to this option, sorry. I just find it easier to sync my video with my, with my audio when I can see the, the two parts to the waveform. So that's just a personal preference. And the other thing you can do is turn on your film strip view. So that's gonna give you a bit of a preview of each of the video clips. And when you zoom in, that's just especially gonna make it easier to see uh, which clip is which, especially when you have a lot of video clips in the, in the timeline. So these are just a few different options you can change to make your workflow easier. Now, the other thing I like to do is rename my video tracks. So I've already done this. So I've named this A cam for my A camera, B cam. Uh, my B roll footage is, is on this track. My aerial footage is, is on this track and I have my tiles at the top. This is just an example of, of a typical edit. This might be for YouTube or could be a short documentary or a short film. And I've also done the same with my audio tracks. So I've renamed this to Dialog and you can do this just by clicking uh, in, the, in the name and you can type in whatever you like. I've renamed this to Music and I've got my Ambient Sound, my Foley one and my, and my I should rename this to Foley two. And I also like to color code my tracks. Now I do that by just simply clicking on one of the tracks and going to change color. So I'm just gonna change this to an orange color. That's my main camera. And I'm gonna do the same with my dialogue because my dialogue is matching my, uh, my main camera. And I'm gonna change this by right clicking, going to change track color. I'm gonna make it a matching color. So I'm just gonna make it an apricot. That way they kind of match together on the timeline. Now with my B cam, I'm gonna do a similar thing. I'm gonna change this to a yellow color. So that way they're both warm colors. So they go together. And my B-roll footage, I'm just gonna leave it as blue. And my aerial footage, I'm gonna change this to, um, let's say a pink. Just so they're, they're very different defined colors. And with my ambient sound, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna change this to a, uh, let's say, We'll go like a purple and we can leave the foley as is but i will change my music track as well to a teal color so that's just really defining each of our tracks and this is mostly because when we get uh complicated edits when we have multiple video tracks and audio tracks and the more tracks that you add eventually the size of your your video clips, your size of your thumbnails is going to be decreased. So for instance, if we go to our track height, we just decrease this. Eventually that film strip is going to disappear. And that's when it really helps to have everything color coded. Same with our audio, because we know what everything is based on the color. Because color is just a really good representation and visual way of, of seeing things. Also, when we decrease our video track height, our name is gonna disappear as well. So that's when it also helps to have everything color coded. Now, the other thing I like to do is actually lock my, my music track. So I'm just gonna uh, click on this little lock icon. And that's just gonna make sure that when I'm cutting all my footage in time with, uh, in time with the music, it's not gonna actually cut my, my music uh, track accidentally. Well, that's all we've got time for, guys. I hope you found this tutorial really helpful. I hope it helps you to speed up your workflow and make it easier to work on, on those larger video edits in your timeline. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more content like this in the future, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate all your support, guys. It helps me keep this channel going. 
And in the meantime, have an awesome day, guys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you, bye.